Good, good evening and welcome to Greater Somerville for October 7th, 2014. I'm Joe Lynch. On the evening of April 13, 18th, 2013, MIT patrol officer and former Somerville Auxiliary Police Sergeant Sean Collier of Somerville was murdered while on duty outside the Stata Center on the MIT campus in Cambridge, Massachusetts. He was just 27 years old. Sean Collier, a F Somerville resident, spent three years on the Somerville Auxiliary Police Department. In August of 2013, he was posthumously awarded badge number 310 and appointed to the, the Somerville Police Department. In the months since his passing, Officer Collier has been honored not just by his family and friends, but by the cities of Cambridge, Somerville, the MIT community, and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Remembering Sean Collier tonight are two members of our community, from Lindell's Bakery, Dave Galetis, and Somerville Auxiliary Police Department Chief, Gary Carvalho. On October 17th through the 19th, Dave and Chief Carvalho and his department, along with hundreds of family members, friends of Sean, and civic organizations, will participate for the second year in the Sean Collier Memorial Scholarship Fundraiser. Here to talk about their friend Sean Collier and the upcoming memorial fundraiser are Dave Galetis and Chief Jerry Carvalho. It is my pleasure to welcome you both to Greater Somerville. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Here under the hot lights of SCAT TV. <laughs> hot lights. So, Chief, I'm going to start with you because, you know, many, many people in this community and across Massachusetts uh, remember Sean. They know about Sean. They know what happened to him. But I want to give the folks a sense, when he was serving as sergeant within the Somerville Auxiliary Police Department, can you give us a little bit more insight into Sean? Sean was a very young and motivated individual, um, always took on extra work, was there for the youth of the city. Uh, our function in the city basically are the schools and the parks. And whenever he was in the park, he would always be out with the kids that were playing, whether it's basketball, uh, baseball. We didn't have a lot of soccer going on at that time. But he, he made friends with a lot of the children and the, you know, the youth in the city via you know, his use of the, the auxiliary. And how was it that he came to the auxiliary police department? I know the stories about Sean because I have friends up for us. And, but you tell it in your own words. Sean always wanted and had a goal to become a police officer ever since high school. And he saw some of the auxiliary as a, a, a way or a vehicle of getting some experience for that, which a lot of our members do that. So uh, being uh, you know, a Somerville resident, uh, at one time he, he just said, I'm going to Somerville, I'm going to do it there. He came to us, he fit the criteria. He was a little bit young, because he was, uh, I believe, just turned 20 when he came to us. But um, he fit, he fit perfectly with us. And that's how he came on. Responsible, diligent, Most hard working, those are all the superlatives that you hear yes. about him. Yes, and they're all true. Yep. Every single one of them, plus. So you gave us a little, little taste of what the auxiliary does, though. For the folks at home, you know, you say that many, many police officers start off in the auxiliary department. What is it that attracts a young guy like Sean Collier to want to become a law enforcement officer? It's in their blood. There's no question about it. Um, they want to give back to the community. They want to help. And mostly it's the, the ability of helping uh, your fellow human being, being able to, to achieve that goal that's within them. And that's what Sean had. And to continue that, we have um, you know, one, the sponsor for the weekend event down in Ball Square, down at Lindell's. And the purpose of that fundraising is to assist other young men and women with scholarships. That's correct. Folks That's like Sean who are coming along, give that scholarship money, raise some funds, give that scholarship money so they can realize their dreams of law enforcement. Yes. So, so we're going to get over to you, Dave, just <laughs> in, in a little bit. But yeah. I wanted to speak a little bit more about Sean. You know, you, you told me the story before uh, the program, and I asked you about Sean's family, you know, how they were holding up and how they're doing. And f folks at home would be interested to know that they're still very much involved in the scholarship oh, they, foundation. They definitely are, yes. Yep. 
his Jen, uh, his sister, she will come down, or she has in the past two years come down and actually awarded the scholarship for me mm -hmm. uh, to uh, students of uh, Silver High School. So they're very much involved in, in all aspects of uh, dealing with anything that comes up for Sean. We have, um, I just went to black, I'm, I'm sorry, gentlemen. There you go. <laughs> that was my fault. Technology. Um, it's terrific, you know, because there was such an outpouring of support for the family. And it's, I think it's very, very gratifying for this community to know that from us, his family will always have a place here in Somerville. Oh, so nice. let's talk, a, Dave, a little bit. This is the second year for Lindell's. Right, second year. Uh, Lindell's, I attended the event last year, and I was asking you, where did all those people come from? We never, I mean, our goal was to, you know, raise a little bit of money, show that we want to help out, and just really bring the community together. And the first hour, I mean, we started at 7 o'clock in the morning. We said, you know what, we'll play it safe. Let's start at 7 a.m., give us enough time to set up. No one would be here for a little while. 7.30 hits and there's already people starting lining up at the door. And from there, it just it blew up after that. I mean, people from all over the state, uh, people out of state were coming, doing anything they could to help out, asking local businesses that we didn't have a chance to reach out to before the event to help us out. We're coming down and bringing products that they wanted to put, put a part of the raffle. Just everyone possible just, just did anything they could to make sure this was successful. I did attend last year and I was amazed, totally amazed at the yeah. number of organizations in, in addition to Somerville. I mean, there were folks from all over the metropolitan yeah. Boston area. Was. I noticed, um, and I asked you, where did all the motorcycles come from? Yeah. Um, you know, we used to be known, Ch Chief Carvalho would tell you that, Somerville was known for roving motorcycle, uh, I don't, we didn't call them gangs, groups. Yeah. Clubs. 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 We now refer to them as clubs. Yeah. Last last year at that fundraiser, there was an enormous amount of clubs that attended in support of the fundraising right. effort. It was terrific. It terrific was. to see. Somerville Police Department always in compliment to the auxiliaries. They were there in force. I saw um, uh, Deputy Chief Cabral was there. I think at the time, uh, Tom Pasquarello had left already. So I don't think I had seen Tom down there, but many, many members of the Somerville Police Force, in addition to your own force, were there. Yeah. So, amazing turnout. Support from the other Ball Square merchants, I assume they're right there with you, not the major sponsor, but... Everyone was allowed to help out. Yeah. I mean, we didn't even... I'd go into places, you know, you prep yourself, ready to introduce the event to somebody, say, you know, this is what we're trying to do. You couldn't even get halfway through. Whatever you need. Doesn't right. matter, whatever you need. That's true. And then same thing, even the places that, like I said before, that we didn't get a chance to even reach out to, walking down the street, here you go, put this on the raffle table, good luck. It just, you always like to think the community's together, and then you see it, and it's just, it blows you away. It's, it's amazing. But that's not unlike how you reacted when you were approached by Sean's brother. Right. Um, I had, um, I was at a concert one night, actually, and uh, during the concert, they had done a little memorial for Sean on the stage. And uh, it was funny because I had just, things had just, uh, Sean had just been put into the Somerville Police Department uh, after passing. This was about a week after. So it was funny just how everything was happening all at once. And uh, after the concert, there was a little after party there. And I got there kind of early. And, and uh, there was a guy just hanging out there. We were talking, you know, having a beer together. Asked him who he was, why he was at the show. And it ended up being Rob, Sean's brother. Um, you know, we started talking just. It's amazing how everything started connecting together. Um, and, you know, I, I was just, when I heard everything that happened, um, I didn't know Sean personally. So I, I treated it like, like everything else. You know, it's, another, it's a really sad story. Um, you know, but I didn't know anything about Sean. And then I started to talk to Rob, and I just understood what kind of person Sean was. And every single person I talked to, it was just, I, I've never seen so many people so willing to just go out of the way to say what an amazing person he was and what a hero he was. And, just took so much time out of his own personal life to do the things for other people. And uh, I think, you know, after that happened, I told my family about what happened, and we just, we knew we wanted to do something. We knew that, you know, we've been around here long enough, we have a lot of support from the community. We want to do something that can really help out and really show that we honor Sean and help the community get together to honor him. So we came up with the idea for the fundraiser. We came back to Rob. He was all about it. We said, Rob, Whatever fund you want to help out, we're willing to do it. And that's how we got in touch with Jerry. And next thing you know, it's 
So it was from the family that actually said, you know, uh, because of Sean's desire to be a police officer, right. the funds sh really should be used to help other young folks they who want to be police officers. Didn't even have to think twice about it. They knew right away. Contact Jerry Carvalho. This is the best. This is the scholarship program we want the money to go to. Great, great. But Jerry, you know, something that I think you told me or, or Dave told me was that the scholarship fund had actually been around for a while. Yes, that's right. Yeah. <clears throat> The fund was um, established, I want to say, maybe about 15 years ago. And we really didn't have a good name, so it was just a Somerville Auxiliary Police Scholarship. Um, with you know, the passing of Sean, it was a no-brainer. Um, this will be our way of memorializing uh, Sean's memory, and we changed the name that year right over to, uh, to Sean, you know, Sean's Scholarship Fund. Terrific. How about um, disbursement over the past year? Have you, uh, you mentioned Sean's sister, Jen, mm -hmm. and she has awarded some of the recipients the funding. Yes. How does that work? Do they apply for assistance on their scholarships? And Yes, that's all handled right through the Somerville High School Scholarship Committee. Okay. Uh, that's where the fund sits. And the only requirement is that the uh, recipient is going into um, higher education for criminal justice. That's all. So, this so year, criminal justice doesn't necessarily mean law enforcement. They, no. Okay. I mean, okay. It's, so it's a little as wider there than you know, somebody who wants to be a police officer. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, we think in, in, in setting it up that way, that that's the way Sean really would have liked to have seen it. That way it's broad, but it's still directed down in the right route. And that's the way we went with it. Terrific. And what have you, last year's fundraiser? I think I saw a number somewhere, but I don't want to misspeak. Uh, 6,200 we raised last year. Great, yeah. great, great, great. And this year, what's your goal there, Dave? Um, you know, we, we like to keep things realistic, but uh, we're shooting for, we'd like to pass it this year. Yep. Um, if not, we'd like to, over the two-year total, break 10,000 this year. Yep. That's Terrific. our main goal, but we're always looking to pass it. We're always trying to come up with new ideas to go above and beyond. So the way that you're going to raise those funds are through auction items. Right. And then one of the remarkable pieces that I, I think, you know, everybody was kind of um, uh, happy with was one dollar from every half moon sold <laughs> out of Lindell's right. for badge 310. Yep. The half moon will have Sean's badge number on it. One dollar of every of those, every single one of those purchases is going back into the scholarship fund. That's right. Great. We'll have people there at one in the morning each day starting to make those moons. <laughs> <laughs> I did notice that uh, some fairly fa uh, recognizable names were donating uh, some of the sports memorabilia right. last year. Who should, who should we put the tap on this year, Dave? Um, I'll give you the spoiler alert right now, the two big pieces this year. Um, we're going to be raffling off a uh, 16 by 20 framed autograph picture of uh, Rob Gronkowski. The Gronk. The Gronk. And uh, our big piece this, this year is uh, we have a picture signed by Patrice Bergeron of the Bruins yep. that also comes with a uh, piece of game used stick and game used net. And uh, along with that, we have a couple other pictures um, that we're going to be raffling off, too. Um, some gift cards from great local businesses, always willing to help out. And uh, whatever else people start dropping off during the weekend, like last year. How about Brady? You want, you want me to place a call to Brady? Oh, uh, absolutely. We need him call. down there. We'll get something He was, he was wild over the weekend. He must be ready to go now. Yeah, he's ready to participate. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, he's riding high these days. But um, let's talk a little bit. Uh, I, I, you know, said that I would give give equal time to Lindell's. I want to ask you, everybody says, oh yeah, Lindell's was sold, it was sold, it was sold. People don't, you know, fairly new people to Somerville don't understand how old Lindell's actually was. It was 18... 1887. 1887 it was yeah. established in the city. Right. And then when did the new owners, your family... Uh, my family's had it, I can't give an exact total, but it's a a little under over 15 years now my family's had it. Right, yeah. right. Um, couldn't be happier to be a part of the Lindell's brand now. Um, you know, I was younger when my family first got involved and then kind of grew up in the bakery as, uh, as I started growing up. And uh, it's just, you don't realize how much of a legacy it was, was until you started really hanging out there a lot. And I mean, that's what kicked right back to the fundraiser was it was just the people that, I mean, you know, I, I did the, I ran the raffle outside and the people that were coming up to the table, I've been coming to Lindell's for 50 years, 40 years, 30 years, 
thank you so much for doing this. And then, you know, everyone loves to tell you what product they used to buy when they were a little kid. Honeycomb bread. Uh, honeycomb bread. That's, that's <laughs> usually the number one. It's always honeycomb bread that everyone talks about. Um, it just it feels great to be a part of something like that that's such a staple in the community, and the name is. And, and like, you know, we haven't been a part of it that long. But uh, I think we've done a great job of keeping that name alive. Um, you know, we would never, ever change any of the recipes because that's the last thing we need mm -hmm. from the communities to hear from that. So we keep everything old school. There's a lot of new bakeries around that like to try the new fads, try this, have fun. We're going to keep it old school. That's what we're good at. Yep, don't tamper with the brand name. That's right. That's right. Coke learned that a long time ago, <laughs> didn't they? Let's, um, the details of the scholarship again and how the funds are dispersed, how do they apply for it, Jerry? Do they make application to the high school fo folks? Yes. And then how many did we have applied for scholarships last year? Do you, you know, know I didn't get that? that number, but they do make their application right through the, the, uh, the guidance office at the high school. Yep. Um, again, I don't know what the total number was that did apply. We gave out, I believe it was two uh, scholarships and we're looking to do the same this year. Okay. And as funds, you know, increase, we'll probably either increase the value of the scholarship we're giving up or increase the number. Any idea where they head into, which colleges they're heading into for the criminal justice courses? We've had students over the years go into Bunker Hill, Northeastern, uh, UMass. They've gone virtually in, in all directions, all different schools. Mm -hmm. Sean was at Bunker Hill? I believe so. I, believe Hill. He, I think he, he was at Bunker, Bunker Hill. Hill for a while, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, um, let's go right back into the details of it. So it's next week, weekend, September 17th, 18th, and 19th? No, uh, October 17th and the 19th. Did I say September? Yeah, I'm sorry. October uh, 17th, 18th, 19th. Yep. In the heart of Ball Square, yep. in front of Lindell's. Mm -hmm. Watch out for traffic because last year I got a pleasant surprise trying to get through Ball Square to pick up my breakfast. <laughs> um, but it's an enormously, enormously important um, fundraising effort. And especially with Sean's family well behind this, you know, in supporting the effort, I hope that we have a slew of people coming into Lindell's yeah. and to um, Ball Square um, in support of the scholarship fund. One other thing I wanted to ask you, Jerry, is when Sean left the auxiliary department and was going over to the MIT, he still had every intention of coming back here to Somerville. Most definitely. As a full-time Somerville police officer. Yes, he did. Yep. His heart was in Somerville. He had worked for other departments um, on part-time basis. He worked for Hull uh, for a while on, as a summer officer, summer police officer. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he got the job at MIT, but his heart was in Somerville. We have a new chief, um, Tom Pasquarello, left uh, earlier this year. We have a new chief, Chief Dave Fallon. Um, what do you think it means, what do you think it's going to mean to a new chief to see that, you know, such a bright rising young star was cut so short like Sean? They had him on the, on the force for the next 20, 30, 40 years. Do you think a chief, you're a chief, but do you reflect on that in watching the newcomers the young folks coming into the forest and saying, that one's going to make a great cop. That one may fade out after 10. I can see it from my perspective as an outsider, but kind of in the, the mix of the, the, the department, that you can pick out the ones that really have it in depth in them. Um, you hope that the ones that I'm dealing with on the auxiliary have that drive and try to emulate, you know, Sean's... Uh, what he was and it, you know would have been um, they lost a great person mm. they really did yeah. and I, I want to say that I think our new chief realizes that um, just by virtue of, of what he is hearing from everybody and what Sean has uh, achieved in his life his short life uh, getting to the, the the area that he got to and then the next week or the next month coming into Somerville Somerville lost a big big person there when Sean left us. Mm. It's, you know, and it's tough, I think, for, um, you know, folks who mentor younger folks who want to get on to the force, not only in the auxiliary, but in the Somerville Police Department, there's, there's the brotherhood. 
the brotherhood of officers who try to mentor the younger ones. And it, I happened to have a couple of conversations with members of the Somerville Police Force after, um, you know, after everything died down and, you know, the memorials were over and, and they still exhibited, you know, shock and dismay and sadness, great, great sadness, because they knew Sean when Sean had worked down at the Somerville Police Department. They knew him, they mentored him, you know, they were bringing him along because instinctually they knew that was the kind of cop that they wanted to serve beside. Mm -hmm. So, tragic loss. We have good people in the city of Somerville who are going to continue on with Sean's memory. I know his family greatly appreciate it. Um, one more time, it is September. October, <laughs> October, you know, you think I get the change of months by a week into it, but it is going to be on October 17th, 18th and 19th outside of Lindell's. It is the Sean Collier, Collier Memorial Scholarship Fundraising Weekend. Um, I hope everybody in Somerville and beyond comes down and supports the sponsor, Lindell's, chats with the chief about the scholarship. Will there be some folks from the high school down there as well? or? I hope so. Yeah. Last year we had a good showing. Yeah. A lot of teachers came down last year too from the high down. school thanking us and just wanting to be a part, meeting, meeting different people down there. Great. You know, I think, I mean, I mean I'm, when the, I know I told you the show is recorded and I send it out, you know, in the next two days to a lot of media folks. I think our friend at the high school is going to get a copy of this show as well, just so he can remember to put it up onto the Somerville website. Yeah. So they can see how important it is, you know, if they have young men and women who are considering a career in criminal justice, they don't necessarily have to think, well, it's going to be too expensive. There are outlets. There are places that they, they can go. Mm -hmm. And the scholarship fund will help them get there. That's right. So let's hope. Jerry, anything else you want to say about the Auxiliary Police Department? No, other than uh, it's a great unit. You know, I'll, I'll plug the unit a little bit here. That. Um, Anybody interested, we're there, and it's all volunteer. We are the people that you'll see uh, out there directing traffic around the road races, which was one of the things that Sean loved to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're open basically on Tuesday nights for anyone that would like to come down and inquire about us or go to our website. And what's the website, Jared? Uh, it's the sapdonline.com. sapdonline.com. Yes. Yep, terrific. And I've seen your folks for the last, how many years that they've been reinstituted the fireworks at Trump Field? 10 years? Both of them, yes. 10, ten, ten years, yep. so I've seen your folks in my neighborhood and they're greatly appreciated. Thank you, we appreciate it. A uniform on, nobody parks on the sidewalk, <laughs> nobody parks in front of a fire hydrant. I mean, thousands of people flood into that neighborhood and it's always the Somerville Auxiliary Police that you see on the bicycles, you see down on, on foot patrol, you see all around the park, so. Hats off to the We exhibits. try. We thank you very much for that. Yeah. Dave. Um, more than anything, I, I always want to reiterate, I want to thank Sean's family for letting us be a part of this. Um, you know, we don't treat this like something we're doing for the scholarship. We, it's all, we feel honored being able to do it. It's a privilege for us to be able to help out like this. Um, we can't thank the community enough. And, you know, like I said before, we never thought we were going to get this kind of audience that was just going to react to this. We never thought the amount of people that were going to be there and we just we feel so lucky to be a part of it and to be able to help out like that and you know the first year when we did it we just we weren't sure we, we said you know this would be a fun thing to do one year and then you know five hours into it we said forget it every year we're doing this yeah. without a doubt every year. That's terrific. Yeah. That's terrific. Tell me a little bit uh, there's one other question I had about Lindell's. Sure. Honeycomb bread. Mm. Let's talk about honeycomb bread. <laughs> <laughs> give you a little knowledge about it. <laughs> How do you make honeycomb bread, Dave? Come on, give uh, the secret. I, the secret will, I won't even get. That goes down to the grave with whoever. We're not even sure. That's not getting passed on. But, uh, Dave, you're amongst friends here. Oh, I know. I I know. We're not going to tell anybody <laughs> the, you know, who's watching. We're not going to tell them. Come I can on, tell you friend. it's definitely still the fan favorite. Um, I can't give you that sweetness recipe away, though. All right, so <laughs> we probably know that you do use honey. Honey, molasses. But you don't use any combs. No, no combs. It's honey, molasses, <laughs> we get the picture. Yeah. You're not going to buy Jaya Dave. No, 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 I can't. It's all we want is to keep enjoying it. That's all we ask. <laughs> we won't get rid of it. As long as people keep enjoying it, it'll always be on the menu there. There you go. Tell me one more time the 
city of Somerville, Somerville Auxiliary Police Department's website, SAPD. 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 Online. Dot com. Online. Dot com. I'm good. I have to repeat that because we're going to put the link from our show over to you guys if anybody has questions about how to apply for or talk to you right. folks. If there's any problem with the website, just Google us. It'll pop. Okay. That probably may be the easiest. Great. We're going to have this show, as everybody knows, we're going to have this show up online, hopefully tomorrow. Um, we're going to have links over to the Somerville Auxiliary Police Department. We'll also have our link over to the Lindell website, which gives you the flyer and the promo about October's, October 17th, 18th, and 19th, second annual Sean Collier Memorial Weekend at Lindell's Bakery. Uh, Lindell's, for those of you who don't know, because you just got off the train from Paris or something, is in the heart of Ball Square, a bustling place to be over the weekend. Uh, every half moon with Sean's badge number 310 on that, one dollar of those proceeds will go to the Somerville Auxiliary Police Department Scholarship Fund. It is now known as the Sean Collier Memorial Scholarship Fund. Please support this worthy cause. My guests tonight have been Dave Gladys from Lindell's Bakery and Somerville Auxiliary Police Department Chief Jerry Carvalho. As always, stay safe, stay informed. We'll see you next time.